Hi everyone, and welcome to my session. Uh, my name is Tatiana, and I'm an Android engineer at Willowtree. Uh, we're a mobile development agency based in uh, Charlottesville, Virginia, and uh, Durham, North Carolina. Um, we do uh, mobile apps for different clients as well as websites. Um, and uh, I've been mostly working on Android projects at Willowtree, but I also have some uh, experience on uh, iOS and Xamarin, but developing for Android Native is my favorite so far. Um, so uh, that's why I'm here. And so today we're going to talk about uh, the most Pi relevant feature in Android that has ever been developed. And uh, of course that's slices. And uh, I hope you, all, you guys are all excited about Android Pi. Uh, and uh, even though the slices have not launched yet, we are, uh, today we're going to discuss how to uh, build them and how your app can benefit from using slices. Uh, also, before we begin, I'd like to note that uh, some code examples that you'll see are going to be in Kotlin. So I'm, I'm assuming that uh, most of you guys are familiar with Kotlin and maybe have adopted it in your apps already. But uh, if for, for some reason that is not the case, please feel free to let me know if you need any clarifications. All right, so let's get started. Uh, so slices are basically uh, pieces of app content that can be uh, surfaced outside of your app. And uh, from an engineer's standpoint, it's a, stru a structured and serializable piece of data uh, that uh, contains the content that you have, the presentational hints, and also actions that the user can take. Uh, slices were designed by Google to be presented on a variety of different surfaces. They can be presented in different formats, and uh, they can be slightly customized by the presenter. Uh, Google is planning to launch Slices in Google Search and Google Assistant. So uh, I remember at the I/O session they said that it's going to happen at the end of the summer, but uh, right now is end of the summer already. So unless it happens in like three days, uh, I guess hopefully it'll come uh, in fall. But anyway, uh, Slices uh, have already been available for us to experiment with for a while. Uh, they're a part of Android Jetpack, and. Uh, uh, they've been available for us in developer preview, and uh, they're backwards compatible down to API 19, which is KitKat, and that covers 95% of Android devices out there, so that's really cool. Uh, so let's take a look at some examples of what slices can look like, and uh, really it can depend on uh, what your app does. So it can be, um, for example, slices that displays the upcoming stay at the hotel, the dining options at the location of your interest, uh, the uh, transportation options, or maybe showing an image from a movie preview. And as you can see, you can have uh, different kinds of content there. So you can have like little uh, icon buttons and uh, images and a little bit of text. So we're going to talk a little bit about that later. What, what exactly uh, can you do uh, with slices there? Uh, so what is the big purpose behind slices? Google's goal was uh, to create a single reusable API that would allow to generalize how remote content and actions will be presented in the system. Uh, so it's not just uh, presenting like the uh, pieces of your app. So the big plan will be uh, for slices to be reused like everywhere in the system. Like we don't know when it's going to happen yet. Uh, also, slices can serve as a UI enhancement for app actions. And uh, while Google was developing slices, they were following the three key principles. Uh, so first principle is that they wanted slices to be templated. So that means that uh, they wanted to uh, slices to have uh, flexible and rich content, but at the same time, they wanted to be dependable and presentable on the different surfaces. Like for example, uh, you could show it up in uh, Google Search and Google Assistant. Um, they also wanted slices to be interactive. So um, so that you would be able to update content in your slices when necessary and uh, so that the user can actually interact with them and uh, deep link into your app or perform some kind of actions. Uh, slices are also updatable. That means that uh, uh, Google will be creating uh, new updates for slices uh, much more quicker than the traditional Android uh, releases. Um, and Potentially, they will enable some new surfaces and some new places for slices to appear. And uh, they might also introduce some new types of templates and uh, different kinds of content that you could put into slices. So why would you actually need to build slices? 
Uh, so as you can see, user retention is, uh, can be really hard. And uh, just look at this graph. It's you know, really uh, frustrating that as the time goes by, uh, users lose interest in their app. And there are like, a lot of different sources currently fighting for our attention. And uh, if you want to keep your users engaged and coming back to your app, you really need to work hard. Um, so f some uh, statistics we have here from Localytics show that 20% of the apps are only used once. And uh, if the user has not opened an app in seven days, there's 60% chance they're never going to open this again. Uh, and as you can see, retention drops uh, over time. So what do we do here? Uh, one of the ways you can uh, improve user retention is by sending targeted push notifications. And uh, that can really help, but it also has some disadvantages because, uh, well, first of all, users can turn off the notifications. And second, uh, the notifications might not always come at the right time, and users might not always be interested in what's, in, what's inside a notification. Uh, so when is actually the best time to engage the user? And uh, if you think about it, we might have a way to know when the user actually wants to do something. Like, for example, they, uh, they need to get a ride to Brooklyn Expo Center. We know that uh, this is the thing they want to do. So this is when we should present the user with options that will allow them to, re uh, to come back to our app. So let's take a look at how slices can be integrated in uh, Google Search. Um, so here we basically have two options. So user can search for app name, like for example, YouTube, and they'll be presented with, a, with something called a canonical or default slice uh, for YouTube. So like in uh, this example, it's uh, a little thumbnail of the video that they were recently watching. Another option is that uh, users can search for some general keywords, like for example, maps or Wi-Fi, and um, they'll be presented uh, by uh, different slices depending on the keywords. Um, so first of all, in order for slices to appear in search, uh, the app must be installed on the device. Like we're not doing any kind of things with instant apps here. And uh, in order to, for your app to uh, have a canonical slice, uh, you would have to add metadata in your uh, main activity in the manifest. And you'd have to indicate that uh, the name of this metadata is slice URI, and the value would be uh, the actual content URI, basically a deep link to the slice. Uh, well, we'll talk a little more about it later. And also, you'd have to explicitly grant permissions to Google Search and Play Services, and uh, this can be done by using Slice Manager. Uh, so Slice Manager is a class that uh, is directly responsible for granting permissions to slices. And in this case, for Google Search, we'll be granting Slice permission to Google Quick Search Box and uh, for google.android.gms. Then another case is, uh, is creating the general term slice, slices. So the, the, the kind of slices they're presented when users are searching for general terms, like I want to get a ride or I want to see trending videos. So this will take a little more work. So, uh, here we would have to integrate a wrap with Firebase app indexing. So this is the framework that allows your uh, that allows Google Search to see the content that you have in your app. And uh, currently, this API has not yet launched, but in the future, you'll be able to tie your slice to the uh, Firebase app indexable here. So as you can see in the example, you'll be setting the metadata to slice URI, and then uh, and your slices will show up in search. And also you have to create a slice provider in your manifests. So then uh, again, later we'll follow up on that. Um, uh, slice provider is basically a content provider that uh, allows you to uh, show your slices. And here you see in the intent filter, you have to specify your uh, slice URI. Then also another case we have is, the, is using slices with app actions. So in this talk, we're not going to focus on app actions so much uh, because it's a basically a whole separate subject. And uh, as uh, of the time of speaking, we don't really have uh, too much documentation available on it. But uh, basically, um, the way it works is that Google would have a catalog of intents with their own data schemes uh, that you can choose from. So uh, basically, they would have 
uh, in different intents. So intent is something that user would like to do, like for example, request a ride or translate or check whether. So all of these things are intents. And uh, in the future, you'll also be able to create your own intent. And an action will is uh, something that supports a specific intent and provides the corresponding fulfillment for it. So basically, your uh, app or service will be processing this intent and performing this action that user requested. So you'll be fetching data for the weather, for example, and then uh, giving it back to the user. And uh, so in your Android app, you would have a file called actions.xml, so it will be defining and mapping between app actions and intents in the URIs that uh, your app will be handling. And um, the, uh, this class, the content provider that we earlier talked about, the slice provider in this case, uh, it will be mapping the, the upcoming intent to the appropriate slice URI. So let's uh, take a look at the overall architecture and like how slices work. So like I said, we have basically two apps. So one app is gonna be the host app. It could be a Google search, Google Assistant, or you can also develop your own app uh, that can present slices. And uh, at the end of the talk, I'm gonna show you how. And uh, then we have the app that provides slices upon request. Uh, so, uh, in default case, uh, slice presenter, our app uh, that hosts a slice, is going to request a slice for a certain URI. Uh, and uh, a slice provider in your app will get a call back uh, called onbind slice. And uh, for a certain URI, you would create a slice uh, that uh, matches this request. And this slice will be passed on to the slice presenter and it will be displayed in the slice view. Uh, then. Uh, there's another case when you have to update data in your slice. Uh, so uh, similar, in a similar way, a uh, slice presenter will be requesting a slice for a certain URI. Uh, and uh, a slice provider has to, uh, has to be notified, has to notify the slice presenter of the change that happened. And then a uh, slice presenter will re-request the slice with a certain URI. And uh, your slice provider will be recreating it. Um, another interesting subject is how uh, slices integrate with permission system in Android. So uh, this first thing you know, we should mention is that uh, starting from P, uh, default launcher have access to all slices, and uh, otherwise all the slice permissions will, be, will have to be granted by the provider app or the user. And uh, normally this content provider for slices will be handling this process of requesting permissions for you, uh, so here you can see uh, an example. This is a slice viewer app. So this is the app that Google sample app that Google created for you to test your slices. And uh, so it is displaying the trying to display a slice with a certain URI, but uh, it doesn't have the permission. So it's uh, showing this little permission slice here that says slice viewer sample wants to show slice. And then when you tap on it, it's gonna uh, it's gonna show you the uh, permission dialog, and the user can deny or uh, allow the app to show you slice. Uh, then if you're using uh, Firebase App Index and API, you can also uh, set the fine-grained URI permissions. So basically, the, if you're using Firebase App Indexing, uh, the framework will do that for you when you're doing the indexable set slice URI um, call. Or you can, uh, in slice, through using Slice Manager, you can specifically grant or revoke slice permissions for certain URIs. And also one thing you should mention, I should mention is that um, you can also override user's grant of permission by uh, on create permission request method in slice provider. And one other important thing is that you should not be granting uh, permissions in the manifest, so basically just allow the slice provider to handle this for you and it'll work seamlessly. So uh, to get, have like a quick overview of the what permission flow looks like. So we have a slice view in the presenter app. Um, we're requesting permission uh, to display a certain slice. The user grants the permission. And then the uh, slice manager passes it on to the uh, slice provider. And uh, slice provider takes this, res this result and uh, in, in checks if the permission was granted for the user or not. And if it was granted, then it calls the slice provider dot onbind slice. So to remind you, this is the method that actually creates the slice. And if the permission was not granted, then it just keeps showing that uh, permission slice that you saw earlier. All 
right, so now let's move on to slice templates and actually see how we can build our slices and what we can do with them. Um, so one thing to understand here is that um, the display and surface ultimately decides how to render the slice, so you can like specify how uh, how the content is going to look. So this is something called a template, but um, the presenters can actually make little adjustments here, like they may change the text color, color or size a little bit. Uh, and uh, so basically it means that your slice is not going to always look exactly the same on all surfaces. There might be like slight differences and uh, we do not have control over that. Uh, so slices are typically constructed by using a list builder. So everything you want to put in your slice goes into a list builder. And here you can see uh, we're using a Kotlin extension here. It's like we're not specifically calling a list builder, but using this like shorthand for list. And, uh, and the list usually, a list is supposed to have at least one row of content. Uh, as well as the primary slice action. So here you can see we have one row here in the list and uh, have a title and primary action and also you can set content description here for accessibility. Uh, if you'd like, and uh, within this list you can combine multiple row types, uh, like here you can see uh, one row and we also have like a little grid here of images. So one of the like, smallest elements is the slice action that can consist of a title, an icon, and a pending intent. So pending intent basically represents the uh, intent is your app is going to handle when user interacts with a slice action. Uh, so uh, slice actions can be marked as primary actions, so they will trigger whenever the user taps anywhere on the slice. Uh, so, um, so we have, um, it can be an icon button or it can be like a default, to a default toggle that you normally see on Android or it can be a custom toggle so you, would have, you can set the drawable with an on and off state. And uh, also you can select different image modes here. So the uh, so first option is the icon image, it means it's going to be super tiny and you can also tint this image. And uh, the other two options are a small and large image. So these two are non-tintable. Um, and uh, here on the right you can see uh, some ways to create slice action. So um, well, first we have to create the pending intent um, that will direct you to the main activity, creating an icon, the image here. And uh, to create a slice action, use a slice action dot create and we're passing in the intent, the image, uh, the uh, image mode, and the title for the action. Uh, you can also use slice action dot create deep link. So basically it's going to do the same thing here and as an example, like if you're just uh, want to deep link into your activity. Or you can um, uh, use the uh, pending intent get broadcast to specify your broadcast receiver. So we'll show, uh, I'll show another example of that later. Uh, and you can also have the slice action create toggle. So this is going to create this a little toggle that we were talk talking about be a default or a custom toggle. Then uh, our templates can have headers, so basically it will consist of uh, slice uh, titles and subtitles. Um, you can have a summary subtitle and prim primary action. So uh, in an illustration you can, hear, you can see some examples. And um, you should note that in smaller formats usually the slice will, uh, usually only the header of the slice will be displayed. So, um, like I said, the presenters, they can uh, slightly alter the appearance of the slice. So you can so show the slices in uh, small, uh, they can just show the header or in small format or in full format. Um, and so, uh, if the header is missing, then the, the first row that you have in your list builder will be displayed instead of the header. And uh, slice headers can also display the slice actions. And here you can see some examples of the uh, display modes and customization uh, show you how uh, presenters can uh, display your slices. So it can be a shortcut, which is going to be like a little icon here. It can be small, so basically it's shown a header or the first row in your list. And uh, large, it shows the full slice with all the content that you have in there. And uh, in the customized image, you can see a little bit that the the font is a little different, and uh, also the text color was changed by the presenter. Okay, so then, 
another part of the template is row builder. So basically it represents a row of content and it can have uh, titles, subtitles, it can have one starting item, uh, which, which will be located on the left. And it, has, it can have several end items, which can be like a slice action, so basically like a tappable little icon. It can be just a little image or a timestamp. And it can have primary action. And we have a couple of restrictions here. So end items cannot be a mix of slice actions and icons, and row can only have one timestamp. And uh, here you can see an example of setting title, and subtitle, and an end item. Then we have grid row builder. So this uh, this is, I guess, uh, the probably the fanciest one out of all of them, and uh, can support also different image types that we saw before. Uh, tiny size, a small size, and a largest size. And uh, grid cells like that can be constructed by uh, using a cell builder. And a cell can support up to two lines of text in one image. And uh, cells cannot be empty. So uh, in, on the right, you can see in the little code example. Uh, so grid row can consist, of, in this example, consists of two cells with a large image, title text, and uh, bottom text, and the intents. And finally, the range builder, it's a row that can contain either progress bar or an input range such as a slider. So uh, two examples uh, for you here. So uh, it will be defined as input range. And uh, the, in this case, the title is ring volume and uh, you set in the minimum, the current and max value. And uh, that's for both cases here. So input range is a slider, and uh, range is for the progress bar. And uh, both of them have actions. And also there is a case of uh, disabled scrolling. So some presenters may not support scrolling within the template. So uh, for the case when you have many, many rows, uh, you would have to uh, think about how your presenter is going to handle this. So basically you can add a see more button by using a set see more action. And, uh, this uh, see more button down there is only going to display to be displayed when you use, the presenter has disabled scrolling on the view, or not all the rows can be displayed in space available. And uh, here in the code example, you can see by set, setting see more action, uh, you can uh, specify what uh, your slice can do in that case. So to recap, like when you're trying to prototype slices. You should think about the case of building a default or canonical slice or app name. You might want to build slices that will be discoverable in search by keywords. Then you have slices that might show up in Google Assistant as a response to user's intent. And uh, you really need to think in terms of what uh, kinds of in, uh, actions the user can take. So as an example, users, users might want to see some new content or they may want to be reminded of the existing content. Like for, for example, they might want to see uh, the photos from their last trip. Uh, they might want to accomplish a task right then and there, or they might want to see the actions they can take that are, that are relevant for uh, what they're looking for. Like, for example, they're searching for Brooklyn Expo Center, and you're suggesting a ride to Brooklyn Expo Center. Okay, so now let's take a look at um, how we uh, provide slices uh, and how, how do we set it up in our project. So. Uh, setting the compile SDK version to 28, and we are adding the we're adding the Android X uh, slice libraries here. Uh, now we're using slice core, slice builders, and I'm also using slice builders Kotlin extension. So that one is optional. It's basically Kotlin extension uh, is just making the code uh, cleaner here. Um, and also, I recommend using the Android Studio uh, 3.2 because the uh, because it has the uh, slice provider template here. So basically, you can uh, do, you can just select the new other slice provider from the Android Studio toolbar, and that is going to add your slice provider in the manifest, and it's going to create a template for you. So you don't even need to do that yourself. And so this is what your slice provider is going to look like in the manifest. Um, then uh, in code, uh, we have this uh, on create slice provider. Well, this basically just instantiation. Really, probably would not need to use this method for anything. Then uh, we have the on map intent to URI method. So that is for the case when you have uh, 
deep links set up to your app. And like if you're trying to cache some uh, URL request here, uh, and this is just a sample uh, implementation generated by Android Studio, so you can make it whatever you want. So basically, you, you take an intent and match it to the slice URI, and uh, you can just use a sample implementation. Or uh, if you're not doing any uh, handling of URL requests, then you don't even need this. And finally, the most important method here is unbind slice. So you can see here that it's taken in the slice URI, it returns a slice. So this is where you uh, create all these templates. So here is an example. We can have slices that return some information about a musician or a singer. So you can show like the discography slice, a slice that can direct user to a music player or a preview of their music video. Uh, so, as an example, the audio slice can be uh, basically show the progress of the uh, song that you're listening to recently. Uh, then uh, another thing we can we have in the slice provider here is the methods on slice pinned and on slice unpinned. So, basically, pinning is uh, basically a way that uh, slice hosts uh, the the apps that uh, display slices. They uh, they use they notify apps of which slices they care about. Uh, so basically, it means that the host app is expecting the content to be fresh. So like if you're trying to like sync data here, you should start doing it on the slice bit. So this is basically a way to tell that hey, this host app is going to display slice with certain URI. So maybe I should fetch data for it. And then slice unpinned is the method that indicates that the host app is no longer interested in the slice with this specific URI. And here you would have to unsubscribe or remove like, any observers or uh, scheduling jobs that you're doing. Uh, so uh, in the case of loading dynamic content and refreshing your slices, uh, one thing to remember is that slice provider and bind slice method should return as quickly as possible to ensure the best performance. Uh, otherwise, it can, call, it can cause some UI glitches here, so do not do any long-running operations in there. And it's okay to return null or just display something called a loading slice or some placeholder content. So basically, it can be just like one row that says loading. And uh, that, that would indicate to the user that you're still fetching something. And then when the content is ready to be displayed, then you would have to call the get content resolver, notify change, and then pass in the slice you write that you want to update. And uh, this will result in a call to slice provider on bind slice, and basically the slice will be recreated there with the fresh content. So here's uh, a couple of code examples. So for a loading slice, uh, you can like initiate the load data here. Meanwhile, you return the loading slice immediately. And in load data, you can fetch whatever uh, data from the network you want. So just this is just like a Rx Java example here. And then uh, when you successfully retrieve the data, you can notify a content resolver of the change and pass in the slice URI. Uh, so now, how do we handle the actions that usually has taken from the slice? So basically, slice action is triggered from within the slice, and it's being handled in the broadcast receiver. And then the broadcast receiver will notify the slice provider about the change. Uh, so here you see an example that uh, we create the pending intent. Uh, uh, using pending intent, I'll get broadcast, and we pass in the name of our broadcast receiver that we have on the right. Uh, and uh, Whenever the user switches the toggle, then the broadcast receiver is going to receive the intent. And uh, then we can uh, make the necessary changes in our app. Uh, and then, uh, if necessary, we can also notify our uh, slice provider of the change by using the content resolver .notify change. Uh, so it should be uh, pretty simple like that. Uh, then um, how do we test slices? So we have... Uh, a sample app created by Google that allows you to preview slices. You've seen it on the previous slides before, so you can either use it from the command line by using ADB install slice viewer APK. So it's, uh, it, this app is available on uh, GitHub, uh, Google Samples repository. But most of you probably won't use that because it's not really comfortable. And also you can use the Android Studio run configuration instead. So here you would have to uh, create a new uh, app. Um, 
uh, module here and uh, you have to like s select the uh, module with your app and uh, in the launch options you have to set the URL to slice a dash content and then uh, type in the URI of your slice and then when you uh, run this then slice viewer is going to show up and it's going to either display your slice or if you don't have uh, permission then it's going to show the permission slice and then uh, if you grant permission you'll be able to see it. So let's talk uh, about the host app a little bit. So like I said, we have uh, two apps. The host app is the app that's uh, actually displaying slices and the provider app is the app that creates slices and passes, it in, passes them into the host app. Um, so uh, in, in your provider app, we have the, our slice provider that creates slices. And uh, the host app has uh, something called slice live data. So basically, slice live data is a factory object that uh, creates uh, live data uh, of a slice. So basically, you can observe uh, the slices with a certain URI. And uh, we, we can attach the observer into our host app and uh, observe the slice changes. Uh, using this, uh, using the live data call back here, and then the observer will receive the slice, and it will display it in the slice view. And uh, then, for as far as the project setup goes, we would have to uh, add the slice slice dash view dependency here for the host app. Uh, this is really all you need. And here, what is going to look like when you try to fetch a slice from another app. So uh, we know like what to display a slice with a certain URI. It, um, as you can see here, slice live data can be created from uh, a URI, or it can also be created from an intent. And then it returns the live data of a slice, and this live data can be observed, and uh, then if we receive a non-null slice, then it can, be it can be set to our slice view, and that's basically it. So really not uh, that much that you have to do in order to display uh, slices in your own app. And then just wanted to say a few words about the slice view itself. Uh, so uh, you, you remember that I said that uh, slice, slice presenters can make uh, little customizations and just change, uh, change some things about how they are displaying slices. So basically here's where it happens. So if you want to like, change the tint color or accent color uh, for icons, for example, you can do the set accent color on the slice view. You can also change the way the slice is presented like in different formats. So uh, remember that the slice can be displayed in shortcut mode, which so is going to show like this little action icon. It could be in, in the small mode, so it's just going to display a header. And, it's, it, and it can also be in the large mode, so it's going to display all the content available. So here you can set this mode if you want to. Then finally, you can also uh, get the slice actions. Uh, it, it can be useful for you to know like what uh, actions are available in slice. You can uh, make the slice scrollable and non-scrollable, and that can be used for testing the case with the see more button where uh, Basically, your slice will be wrapped, and you have to like uh, tap on see more to see all the content. And finally, you can also uh, set on slice action listener, and uh, you can set it to uh, notify whenever user interacts with your slice. And you can get a on sli a slice action callback here, and like, maybe you want to use it for maybe analytics or something like that to track like how uh, users are interacting with your slices. So. Uh, Let's take a step back and uh, look at uh, all the most important things we need to know about slices. So uh, you need to think about uh, what actions user can take in your app, like depending on what your app does. And uh, sh you should show just enough content to prompt the user to go back in the app. So it's like technically you can just show any kinds of content, but uh, you should also remember about the uh, cognitive Overload, so like you don't want to overwhelm the user. Like you don't just uh, show them everything you can do in your app in one slice, so that it wouldn't really make sense. Uh, then do not grant permissions in the manifest, and just let your slice provider handle this for you. Uh, also remember about different 
options that presenters have when they're presenting your slices. Make sure you're probably ha properly handle handling the disabled scrolling case and the see more button. And make sure not to do any heavy uh, operations and unbind slice and make sure it returns as soon as it can. Uh, you can use loading slice if necessary to indicate that you're fetching something from the network or just doing some kind of a synchronous task. Uh, if you have any, any kinds of observers or jobs uh, that you have scheduled there, please make sure to remove them on slice on pinned. Uh, also, it will be good to show, uh, to set the content description to your slices for uh, better accessibility. And uh, finally, even though the slide slices have not officially launched yet, um, I think it's always best to be proactive and adopt slices early. And uh, I hope that uh, by this time you have a good idea of uh, what you can do with slices. And uh, you can now think of how slices can benefit you and uh, keep the users coming back to your app. Especially you can maybe benefit from it if you have in-app purchases or like if you're monetizing your app in some way then it will be really important to keep the users engaged. Um, so, yes, this is all I have for you today. And uh, please let me know if you have any questions or feedback. Uh, I would love to hear it. Thank you very much.